like my bracelet? It's a knotted rubber band. So here's the challenge. Can you take a rubber band and put a knot in it? I'd be happy with this basic knot called a trefoil. The trefoil is the simplest non-trivial knot. The loop is the trivial knot. It's like the zero of knots. And the trefoil is the first one after that. It comes in a left and a right-handed form, and I'm challenging you to make a rubber band into either version. There are different ways to display a trefoil knot. You can hold it with two-fold or three-fold symmetry, but no amount of manipulation seems to turn it back into a simple loop. I don't mean doing something like this where there's a tangle that might look knotted. You can unknot that. So this doesn't count either. It's still just a loop that bends a lot. What I'm asking is, can you do some physical manipulation that transforms a simple rubber band loop to a knotted loop that can't be unknotted? Your intuition may say that you need to snip the loop, tie a knot, then glue the ends back together. But I'm going to disallow that process because then it would be too easy to transform any knot into any other knot. Where's the challenge in that? Let's say you can't snip it like this and you can't use glue. In fact, I'll disallow strings with ends at any step of the process or as the final result. The mathematician's sense of a knot is some kind of tangled loop with no ends. So with no ends at any stage in the process, I'm challenging you to transform an ordinary rubber band into a knotted loop, say a trefoil. Now you're probably thinking that if only you studied more four-dimensional geometry, it would be so easy, because in a four-dimensional universe, you could slide part of a loop over in the direction perpendicular to our three-dimensional space, move past the parts of the loop that you want to cross, and then slide back into our three-dimensional space. But that's not how I made this though I'd be interested to see others work that way. If you want to, you can send me a video. What I'm looking for is something physical and real, which we can do as ordinary three-dimensional people. So perhaps you want to say, it can't be done. But just because no one's ever done it before doesn't mean we should give up. If you're a topologist, you might offer a formal proof that it's impossible. There are several well-established techniques in knot theory to prove a given knot cannot be manipulated into another given knot. For example, one can assign what's called a Jones polynomial to each possible knot. There's an algorithm which defines how to analyze the overs and unders in a drawing of a knot to build a polynomial. For a simple loop, the polynomial is just 1. For the trefoil knot, it turns out the polynomial is q to the minus 1 plus q to the minus 3 minus q to the minus 4. The exact details don't really matter here just that there's a well-accepted theorem that says if two drawings have different Jones polynomials, then it's impossible to manipulate one form into the other. So this sort of formal analysis seems to say it's impossible. But, like most applications of mathematics, you need to look at the detailed assumptions. I'm going to claim that knot theory is about mathematically ideal loops of zero thickness. But my rubber band is a physical object, so it has non-zero thickness. Does that suggest any new possibilities to you? How can the thickness help? Consider a fat loop, a torus. You can split it in half with this spiraling cut, which makes three half turns as it goes around. This makes what topologists call the 3-2 torus knot, because you can think of wrapping a string on the surface, and it goes three times through the hole while going two times around the hole. And it's the same as the trefoil. If you travel along the split loop, it now takes twice as long to get back where you started. But more importantly, because of the twist to the cut, the volume of the torus is now knotted into a trefoil. So you can put a knot into a thick loop if you can carefully cut it in half the long way. Can you do this with a rubber band? Surprisingly, yes. I'll show you with this one. Its cross section is round, so I can do it more symmetrically, but the idea works in principle with any rubber band. As a guide, I'm marking three spots along the circumference where the cut will go in vertically in the front and come out the back. I'll also mark halfway between these spots where the cut should be horizontal. Between them, there's twists. Now with a sharp knife, I'll start the cut, then carefully make the twisting cut that goes through these guide marks. I'm holding the knife in a vise so I have two hands to aim the rubber band. I'll do one third, then turn it over, do the second third, then 
turn it over for the final third. And remember, the knife is sharp, and the human body is basically a torus, so be careful not to cut yourself into a knot. Here you have it, a loop transformed into a trefoil. By my rules, you can knot a rubber band. It's really weird for many people to accept. People just assume I cheated by snipping and gluing the ends together somewhere. But that's not how I cheated. If you want to try this with a real rubber band, I suggest you first get familiar with a three halves twist paper Mobius strip. Then try a bagel to understand the trajectory of the cuts before dealing with the thinness of the rubber band, which adds a dexterity challenge. Cutting a paper strip is familiar to mathematicians at least, but there's a sense of mystery when you cut a band which was not prepared with twists. And there's a deeper lesson here too. Don't let your knowledge of mathematics artificially limit what you think is physically possible. Quite to the contrary, Mathematics is a tool which can empower us to do amazing things that no one has ever done before, like making a knotted rubber band bracelet.